All right. So this lecture, let's study implicit schemes. And for implicit schemes, let's start with the characteristic we want the most, stability. So let's ask the question, what is the most stable OD solver you can come up with? Anybody wants to take a wild guess? Yes? Backward order. Backward order. Why do you think that's most? Why why can't you? Why do you think that's the most stable? Because we said it's implicit and it's only one they know. Okay, it's the only implicit scheme you know. Okay, that's actually a very good guess. I mean, forward order. I I there is no theory that says you can design any schemes that are more stable than backward order, but in practice, that's actually the most uh, stable scheme I've seen. And its stability region for the same delta t is usually the widest. So let's now try to analyze what is its stability region. Okay, where do we start? We start with du dt equal to lambda u, the kind of representative ODE we use to analyze the stability region. And then we plug in the backward order solver. So the backward order solver discretize this by approximating the time derivative uh, with uh, a un minus un minus 1 divided by delta t. And that is equal to lambda times un. Right? Okay. So by rearranging these equations, what we get is 1 over delta t. So that's the multiplier on un on the left minus lambda, so that's moving the right-hand side to the left. All of these times un would be equal to 1 over delta t times un minus 1. Right? So that means un would be equal to a multiplicative factor times un minus 1. And that multiplicative factor, which determines the stability property of backward order, it's something like, uh, let's see, if you multiply both by delta t, the numerator is going to be 1, the denominator is going to be 1 minus lambda delta t. So this is the number that determines the stability of backward order. And it's the magnitude of this complex number that we want, right? So uh, of course here the, the formula is simple enough, but like we will encounter more and more complex schemes in the future. So let's actually go to MATLAB to try to see if there is a way to numerically compute the stability region of backward order by plugging in this formula. All right. So let's say the real part of lambda delta t, let's make it uh, uh, link space of let's say minus 5 to 5, let's give it a 1000, all right? And uh, we will have the imaginary part of lambda delta t to be the same. So basically, we're making a grid of a million different lambdas and see for which of these million lambdas backward order is stable and uh, uh, forward order, uh, backward order is unstable. So here, I just have two arrays. In order to make this actually a grid, what do I use? Anybody knows the magic MATLAB in function doing that? Hmm? To make it a grid. So I basically want a milling, basically a thousand by a thousand real parts and also a thousand by a thousand imaginary parts. Huh? Mesh grid? There is a function called mesh grid, yes. So what mesh grid gives you is uh, if you plug in real of lambda delta t and the imaginary lambda delta t. So these are one dimensional functions. It'll give back to you the same two of variables, but in an expanded form. So you see they automatically got converted to be a, a thousand by a thousand. All right, so if you open this, you're gonna see uh, the first uh, row of this imaginary lambda delta t is gonna be the same, minus five, and every row is a different number. Why, whereas if you look at the real, every column is the same number, right? So basically every ij index of these two variables corresponds to one of these lambdas we are looking at, okay? So that enables MATLAB to do very good vector calculation. So the absolute value of uh, uh, 
let's call this amplification factor amplification factor is going to be what is going to be square root of real lambda delta t square don't forget the dot otherwise it'll try to multiply the matrix with itself plus imaginary of lambda delta t square so that's my amplification factor and let's plot it best way to plot it is uh, uh, if you want a fancier let's do surface of uh, real lambda delta t and uh, imaginary lambda delta t and the absolute amplification factor so let's see what it gives us okay uh sorry that's actually not the what i want i actually want the square root of this guy right not lambda itself so i need to compute this guy uh, so amplification factor has to be computed first okay so before that let me compute lambda lambda is equal to real lambda uh, lambda delta t sorry is equal to real lambda delta t plus j right uh, one j is that one j one j is the i think the imaginary number in matlab times imaginary lambda delta t so here i get a, a thousand by thousand complex doubles so that's what i want okay amplification factor now is equal to one divided by don't forget the dot one minus lambda delta t so that's my amplification factor for backward order and then what do i need to do is to take the absolute value of that which i'm just going to take it uh, uh, in the surf so absolute value of amplification factor i'm just going to surface plot it okay uh it turns out that there is one point that is really high, so we may want to limit the z-axis. Z-lim, uh, is it, do I need to put it, uh, let's see. Zero should be the minimum because I'm taking absolute value. And we want to look at what region it is stable. So I'm looking at, I, I want to zoom the z-axis to between zero and one. So any point that is outside the zero one region is gonna be unstable right so let's do that uh, has, to be, uh, has to be like this all right so here is what I get okay uh, why how do I get the color to be a little bit better let me see this looks a little bit like a black hole so that's actually all <laughs> right so I think the color it's still um, okay. Actually, I think shading uh, in turp does that fix the issue? Okay, that fixed the issue. But like the the color is still based on the original axis. So from zero to some huge number, that's why everything looks blue. Uh, C axis I think can fix the problem. Right. Okay. So that fixed the problem, and the uh, color bar. So that gives me a color bar here. So basically, amplification factor zero means it's blue and one is close to yellow. So if you look at this two-dimensional plot, and I can basically a uh, view two makes it two-dimensional, right? So what you can see is that forward order is stable anywhere except for this region over here. Okay, and this region, this plot is a plot, the x-axis and y-axis are real and imaginary parts of lambda times delta t. Which means, as delta t goes smaller and smaller, so if you, if you think of a, a plotting in the space of lambda as opposed to lambda delta t, this hole of instability would shrink or grow as you make delta t to be larger. If you make delta t larger, this hole in the lambda space actually is going to shrink, right? Here, the the limit of the hole is actually two <coughs> equals to lambda times delta t. So that's actually lambda equal to two over delta t, 
which means as delta t goes larger and larger, this hole is going to shrink. The stability of backward order is going to be increasing as you make delta t to be larger. All right. So, so that property actually makes backward order find an application in a very, in a not very related field of integrating ODEs. You will, you often very much find backward order when somebody actually doesn't care about the solution of the ODE at all, but only care about what the ODE is going to do at its steady state condition. Right, so as time goes to infinity, what is going to happen? If somebody asks the quest this question in their um, in their research and they implement a solver specifically for that, you very often find backward order uh, in that type of solver. All right, A any questions? I mean, this is because as you make delta two to be larger and larger, backward order become becomes actually more and more stable. Right.